So, the AMD Fury reviews have come out, and I don't give a damn about architecture or how the card works or anything like that. I care about price, performance, um, its suitability for resolutions, the Cry Engine because of Star Citizen, uh, and its performance like that. So we're going to do some benchmarks, we're going to look at other people's benchmarks and other people's reviews as well, uh, and we're going to see how it does in uh, 3D Mark, Extreme, Fire Strike, and Crisis 3 because that seems like a good test of the Cry Engine. If you can't be asked to watch this video, this rant, and talk about benchmarks, then don't. I'll summarise it now. Basically, the AMD Fury X is a great card at resolutions above 1440p, but currently its technology fails to shine and it suffers against competition and better choices, especially for value for money. Even at the top end of the spectrum, the 295X2 still beats the Fury X at 4K resolutions, and it's only $80 more. Now, I know I'm comparing basically a dual GPU card to a single card there, but, I mean, if we're after performance, then it's fine to do that. So we're going to talk about the AMD Fury X's performance and some of the other top cards in 1080p um, all the way up to 4K. When looking at benchmarks and performance in games, I look at stuff that's built on the Cry Engine 3, uh, the same base engine for Star Citizen, so games like Evolve, Crisis 3, but I always do like the benchmarks from 3D Mark uh, Fire Strike Extreme. Always like that, I think it's a great show of performance. On paper, the AMD Fury X is a powerhouse card. It's priced around $670 at the moment on Amazon, or £510-ish in the UK. Its performance leaves a lot to be desired though, in my opinion. Here, I have a comparison of the performance in Crisis 3 across some of the top graphics cards available, all measured in an uh, average frames per second. At 1080p, the Fury does get beaten by the TI, the Titan X, and the 295X2. The 295X2 clearly shining here, but remember it is a 2 GPU card. In 1440p again, the Fury X has similar performance to the TI and the Titan X, but all get beaten down again by the 295X2. In 4K, we can start to see the Fury X showing dividends and gains on the TI and Titan X, but they do have pretty close performance, and the 295X2 again trounces all others. In 3D Mark Extreme Fire Strike, which I feel is a very fair performance test across the cards, though some people may disagree with me, the story is a little bit different. The AMD Fury is beaten by the 980 Ti, and then obviously the 295X2 tops them both. So, what does this mean for cost, performance? Uh, and all that jazz. Well, at $670, the AMD Fury X is a powerful card, it is quite expensive, has some great technology behind it, and it has some like cool new features and stuff that are really great in theory. Maybe that technology hasn't been given the chance it needs to shine yet, like the Liquid VR and Vulcan stuff that they've got behind it. But at its current price, and with current games, it fails to become a competitive card. Especially with the 295X2 at $750, and the 980Ti's around $650 already in the market. As a single card in all resolutions, I just feel that there are better choices for the money. I'm very interested to see how these cards perform in DirectX 12 though, and well, I'm very interested to see how the 295X2 now performs in DirectX 12. I'd love to see if that card gets better. Um, I think it could be an incredibly powerful card in the future as well. It might just get better and better and better. But we'll have to wait and see. If you are in the market for a graphics card now, try and wait a few weeks for the price war to start. It will drop the cost of these cards quite a lot. And watch eBay too. People quite often sell uh, 295X2s and 980s relatively cheaply, especially when they're upgrading to what they believe is a better card or something that suits their needs better. I, though, am very underwhelmed by what the AMD Fury X offers, but please check out all the sources and other reviews in the description below. There are lots of other opinions there, but the stats don't lie, and that's what I feel is important. I am not an Nvidia fanboy, uh, I'm not an AMD fanboy, I am I like to get the most performance for my money, uh, and I do like to have the best stuff, but I don't want to spend premiums for it. Like, I'm really glad I didn't buy a Titan X, because that would have been a v quite a large waste of money, seeing how good the 980 Ti is. But anyway, please tell me what you think of the AMD Fury X and the other top-end graphics cards too. 
And if you're looking for a graphics card for Star Citizen, try and wait closer to game release. You're going to get a lot more performance for your money then, and we may even see the next generation of graphics cards by then. We also might see DirectX 12 get implemented, loads of stuff could happen, so try and wait as long as possible. Anyway, I hope that was informative. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really does help me. And if anyone has an SLI or Crossfire setup with any of the cards that I've mentioned or shown in those benchmarks, um, please message me in the description too. I'd be really interested to see how some of the SLI and dual card or triple card or quad card setups work for Star Citizen, uh, Crisis 3 and 3D Mark Firestrike Extreme. So please do that, that'd be really helpful. Thank you very much guys, and I'll see you in the verse.